Hello students, it's Mrs. Rook and today we are going to do a lesson that entails interpreting the slope in the y-intercept, particularly when they're put in the context of a real world problem. I hope that you're going to find this lesson particularly useful because it's really going to show you when slope and y-intercept are going to appear in your real world everyday life and how they're applicable. Okay. So, we come to the very first uh, slide on this presentation. And what we want to do first is just review some basics about slope intercept form and lines um, because there's some very important components and definitions that we're going to talk about. And we need to be able to translate those visually to a graph as well. Otherwise, nothing's going to make sense. So, Let's review what slope-intercept form is. We know that equations um, in slope-intercept form are written as y equals mx plus b. m represents the slope. The slope is the rate of change. It um, tells us how y moves compared to x. b is our y-intercept. That is the point where we cross the y-axis. Now, when we're crossing the y-axis, we know that the x-coordinate will be zero at that point. Let's look at an example of an equation in slope-intercept form, and we see this on the right-hand side of our screen. It says, write an equation in slope-intercept form of a line that has a slope of two and a y-intercept of six. Write an equation, we need two things, right? We need a slope and we need a y-intercept, both of which we have. So we're just gonna plug them in. When we plug into the standard form y equals mx plus b, remember that y stays there and x stays there. They stay there as variables. The 2 goes in for m, the 6 goes in for b. That would tell us that if we were graphing, we would plot 0, 6 first on the y-axis, and then we would move up 2 and over 1 to get to our next point. And we remember this from previous lessons, but that 2, that rate of change, tells us how many um, the y change compared to the x in order to find our next point. And here it would be 2 over 1. Let's look at a graph just to recall how to do this. So if we are trying to visualize and translate an equation to its graphical representation, if we have y equals 2x plus 3, that 3 is the point that we're going to start our graph at, 0, 3. So we would put a, plot a point there. The 2 here, when it's a whole number, you're going to put it over 1, or think of it as over 1. So 2 means that we would move up 2, 1, 2, and then over 1 to get to the next point. As soon as you have two points, all you need to do is connect them to generate the rest of your graph and get an idea of what the overall pattern is. Now today we're not going to be graphing because we've already done that, but instead what we're going to do is look at some word problems and look at some graphs and determine what the y-intercept tells us in terms of units or things to which the problem pertains. And we're also going to interpret what the slope might mean. So let's look at an example. The graph to the left here shows the number of newspapers that are delivered and the total pay for Leona's newspaper delivery job. What does the slope of this graph represent? Well, let's go ahead and look at what the graph is telling us. We see that on the x-axis, that's the number of newspapers delivered. On the y-axis, that's the total pay. So remember, slope is rate of change. What is this rate of change telling us? Well, it's telling us the number of dollars that she's going to make based on the quantity of newspapers that she sells. So the slope is the pay per number of newspapers delivered. So that's what we're going to write here. So slope represents Leona's pay per newspapers delivered. Well, how much does she make 
every time she delivers a newspaper. But what you would have to do is actually find the slope of that line. And you can do that by finding any two points and then calculating the slope. So obviously she makes nothing if she delivers none. So zero, zero is a point on that line, right? What's another point on that line? Ooh, when she delivers 20, she makes five bucks. So 20 and five is another point. Now let's think about then slope. Remember slope is change of y over change in x. Well, if we're looking at up the point zero, zero, and then 25, the change between our two y's there, especially if we do y2 minus y1, it's going to be a five, right? And then the change in the x's is 20 minus zero, that's 20. What's 5 divided by 20? It's 1 fourth, right? Well, what's 1 fourth of a dollar? It is exactly 25 cents. So Miss Leona is making 25 cents every single time that she delivers a newspaper. And that's why she's going to have to sell, or excuse me, deliver 20 of them in order to make $5. But the slope, again, is Leona's pay per newspaper delivered. And we actually calculated it, though we did not need to, but I wanted to put it in some real concrete terms for you. But this is what we're asked to do whenever it says interpret what the slope is or interpret what the y-intercept is. We want to actually put it in words that reflect what that problem is all about. Let's try another. Okay, Tara pays a base rate for her long distance phone service plus a per minute charge. This graph right here shows what she would pay for her long distance phone service for the first 60 minutes. What does the y intercept of this graph represent? Let's look back at the problem. So she pays a base rate. What does a base rate mean? That means it's a flat fee that you pay regardless of how much time the call lasts. So what do we think then that this y-intercept is going to reflect? Notice no time has passed. So that would be the flat fee, right? The y-intercept would be the base rate or the flat fee. So that's what we're gonna write here. Base rate or flat fee. We'll just highlight that in red just to set it apart since that's since that is our answer. And you know what, what is that base rate or flat fee? If you're looking over here, it looks like it's right between four and six, which would make it a $5 flat fee. What would the slope represent here? Now remember, slope is always going to be change in y over change in x. So here's the hint. Look at the units that y is in, and then look at the units of x, and that will tell you how to interpret this. So it's going to be dollars over minutes. Okay, dollars of what? It's going to be the cost of the long distance service over time. So we are looking at the time that she is spending on this long distance phone call and we're specifically looking at how it increases as the minutes go up. So the slope as it changes is going to reflect the cost per minute that she is paying in order to continue this call. So it's gonna be cost per minute. So that's how we interpret this in this problem. The amount that she's paying per minute, she's already paying a flat fee of $5, but with each additional minute, this slightly goes up and she's paying a steady rate. What is that rate or that cost per minute? How can we figure it out? Well, let's think back to the problem that we did before. How did we figure out the slope in the previous one? Well, we identified two points. Two points on this line would be five, zero. And then we look right here. We're always looking to see, excuse me, not five, zero. Ooh, Mrs. Rook made a mistake. 0, 5, and then we see 26.
Again, I'm going to highlight those in red just to set them apart. Okay, so let's use these to find slope. So M, or what is our change in our Y's here? Six minus five, that's a one. And then 20 minus zero, that's a 20. Now, see if you can follow me here. This is one dollar divided by 20 minutes. Now, <laughs> we, if we're dividing a dollar by 20, that's going to give us change, right? So since I want this to be in change, I'm going to change this. This is $1, so I'm going to put this $1 sign. I'm going to change it to pennies. We know that $1 is equal to how many cents? Well, 100. So I'm going to put 100 cents divided by 20 move this little guy over okay if you're dividing a hundred cents by 20 what's the amount of cents that you get you get five cents right five cents per minute because you have to remember what the bottom was so it was 100 cents per 20 minutes Move this little guy over again, just so I can put the units here. 100 cents divided by 20 minutes. That ends up giving us just 5 cents when you divide the 100 by the 20, and that's per minute. So that's what that slope, that steady increase is showing, that after you know your first minute, second minute, each time you're adding an extra 5 cents, and we found that specific number by calculating the slope with two identifiable points. And the two identifiable points I used were 0, 5, 26. Now you could have used 26 and then look over here. We could have used 16 and 8 and we would have got the same exact thing that it comes out to 5 cents per minute. But again, if you were just asked to interpret what the slope represents, it's just the cost per minute for the phone call. So what we're trying to do here is put into words what the slope is and then sometimes you're asked to attach a number to it as well. But the most important thing right now is that you're just able to recognize what that slope means in real world, world terms. Okay, let's go ahead and look at one final problem. Okay, Dion pays a fixed fee plus an hourly rate to rent a boat. The table to the left shows how much Dion paid for the boat. What was Dion's hourly rate to rent the boat? So we're not looking at a graph, we're looking at a table this time. Now, let's think about that. If she's paying an hourly rate, the best way to identify that is when we go from one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, looking for the rate of change or the difference, right? What is the difference as you look at each of those? Is the difference the same between each one? Well, as you go up by each hour that she rented the boat, that difference is consistent. And that difference is what? That difference is exactly $12. So that is the hourly rate. Well, what would the fixed cost be? Meaning the fixed cost to rent that boat no matter how much time. Well, if we know each hour she's paying 12, and we know after one hour, she's actually paying 27. So 12 was what she initially paid. That would mean that she'd have to pay an additional $15 just to have the boat at all. And we base that again on looking at that total cost after one hour. It's the 12 hour hourly pay plus that extra fixed cost of $15. We could translate this into the whole equation. Why? Because a fixed cost would be your Y intercept. And then the 12 is your slope. So our equation would be y equals 15 plus 12x, or y equals 12x plus 15. Either one would work. So that is the end of our presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email.